Hi there, welcome to this economics revision video on quantitative skills, looking at how to calculate averages, in particular the mean and the median, which are the two averages required in the A-level exam syllabus. Now, if you want to just get a better grip on which quantitative skills you need to be able to um, have and to use in your economics exams, just take a look at your syllabus. In the appendix at the back, you have a very comprehensive list of all of the things you need to be able to do. Let's start by taking a look at the difference between the mean and the median. Now, they are both a type of average, but as an economist, we need to use them in different situations, and we're going to explore that over the course of the next couple of minutes. To find a mean, we just need to add up all of the values that we're given and then divide by the number of values. For a median, we arrange the values from smallest to largest and then simply identify the value that is right in the middle. An example is the best way to get to grips with the differences between those two approaches and what that might mean for us as economists. So the table shows us the annual salary of a group of five friends. And as you can see from the table, they all have quite different salaries. And that is going to have quite a big impact on the actual outcome when we calculate the two different types of average. So to calculate the mean, as you can see there, what we've done is add up the annual salary of our five friends. And then we've divided it by five because we have five values. And that gives us a mean salary of 48,400. Now, hopefully you can see that that value is actually quite high compared to the salary of Cameron, Ellen and Faisal, whose salaries are much lower than that. So when we've calculated this mean, this type of average, it's not particularly reflective of the living standards of those three. And it's also well below the average, uh, sorry, the, the salary of Belinda. Now, our median salary is calculated in a different way. What we've done this time is order the different salaries from the lowest to the highest. So in that case, we would have Cameron at 18,000, followed by Ellen, then Faisal, then Deepak, and then Belinda as our surgeon at 110,000. In this case, Faisal's salary is the number in the middle, and that is 26,000. As you can see here, that is actually slightly more reflective of the living standards of three of our friends on the table. What's happened when we've looked at the mean is that Belinda's very high surgeon salary has in effect pulled up the mean. It's a strong outlier and that one number has had a really big impact on our final salary, um, the final average salary. So in this case, the mean is not a particularly good type of average for us to have used. So why would we use it? Well, it can be pretty quick and quite easy to use. So statisticians and economists like it because if you have the right pieces of information, it's an extremely quick calculation to carry out. For example, if you want to work out GDP per head, which is a measure that we often use as a quick snapshot of what the living standards in an economy might be like, that's pretty straightforward to do if you already have the economy's GDP and the population size. And those are two figures that most governments of most economies will have to hand quite readily. It's also usually a pretty good measure of the average if our data is normally distributed. That means that it takes the shape of that graph that you can see at the bottom there, where most of the data is concentrated around the middle. Now, the median is a lot uh, better measure if the data is skewed in some way. And you can see that from the diagram at the bottom. In other words, the majority of the data is not in the middle, it's off to one side. And what that means is that we have outliers, like Belinda's salary in this case, that actually pull up the mean. So they affect the mean. The median ends up being a very different number to what is actually the case for many of the people in that population. It's also fairly simple to understand. So what's wrong with both of these measures? So we've already said the mean does not tend to reflect the underlying inequality or unusual spread of data in a given data set. The median deals with that, but the problem with the median is that it can be quite time consuming and difficult to calculate. There is no simple formula that we can use. We do actually have to take the time to put the data in order from smallest to largest. And that can be really complicated and time consuming to do if you have an enormous data set. 
as well as getting specific questions on this in your A-level economics exam, you can use this idea to really good effect in thinking about how to pick up evaluation marks in other longer answer questions. So for example, if you are given data um, that is presented in the form of a mean or a median, one way to pick up evaluation marks in a longer answer would be to question the data that you are given. So for example, if you are given data in a macro exam that relates to um, income per head or some measure of living standards that is something per head, you could potentially question that data and say, well, actually, that might not be reflective of living standards as a whole, and it might have been better to get median income, for example. So that's just a quick additional way and a, a little piece in your economics toolkit that could help you pick up some more marks in an exam. Do take a look out for our other revision videos on quantitative skills. Thanks for watching.